Welcome back to another episode of Thermal Mermaid. And today, I'm gonna change it up a bit and I'm gonna pull out a melt and pour project. And we're going to make these soap bars with planet Earth suspended in space with the moon floating in the background. And as you watch me put this together, I'm gonna answer a couple of questions that I saw posted over in the Facebook group over at Handmade Soap and Cosmetics a while back, specifically about melt and pour projects. So let's get this project underway by doing it in three stages. One part for the planets, one part for the moon, one part for the space. So as I prepare the soap for the planets first, I'm gonna cover the first question. And that was, since I don't have to pull out the lye for a melt and pour project, isn't this the best idea for crafting with kids? Now, you will see some microwavable kid kits for soap making over on toy store shelves. Anytime you see these, these are melt and pour projects. Those are the kind of like the easy bake oven version of what we're doing here. And even for some reason, Walmart has this generic soap making kit where you can make these tiny little mini soaps and it's made out of this low quality color and fragrance. And you can use those with supervision with kids because you're warming up such a small amount when you make these tiny little things. But generally speaking, I don't consider Melt and Pour to be a child-friendly project for kids under the age of 12. Now, of course, if you're one-on-one, -on -one, if you're in complete control of your setting, if you know what you're doing, it's probably fine. But for me, this is not something that I would hand a table full of nine-year-olds and tell them, don't make a mess. The temperatures that I'm melting this soap at are near boiling, really easy to spill, really easy to get burned. And if you do, you really could do some damage, especially for a child. So in this project today, I'm using about six pounds of soap here. That's a lot of hot, melted, near boiling material. I'm separating it out, I'm moving it around. I generally don't do any soaping projects with kids under 12, no matter what technique I'm using. So this is just my preference, and this is what I would tell someone when they ask that question in person. Now, if you do have younger kids and you wanna do one of these fun projects, you could pull out chapsticks, lip balms, bath bombs. Those are so much easier. There are no real hardcore chemicals and you really can use smaller amounts and control your um, temperatures. You just need to melt those things down just to get them liquid. You're not dealing with these really hot boiling temperatures. So again, you can do this with kids if you wanna make soap and you wanna avoid handling lye, but you do need to make sure that you have complete supervision over this project. You cannot turn your back, you cannot walk away. Now, while you're watching me make this, you'll probably know that there's no real recipe for a melt and pour project. You just melt the soap, you add your colors and your fragrance and you're done. And you can see everything that you need to create this in the visual demonstration here. But if you do want the exact colors and fragrances that I'm using, I do have this project written out in the melt and pour section of the recipe directory over in the members section. And that video is much longer and it goes into details on how to get the effects you see. But most of replicating this project is just watching me before your eyes making it here. Now the next question I see is, how do I make a natural melt and pour soap? So this is a little bit tough. If you're buying the crystal clear commercial project like you see me using here, this is made with chemical detergents to get it so that it'll melt over and over and also have this crystal clear look. Now these detergents are approved to be used as soap or to make soap products with. So personally, I have no qualms about it. And if you wanna make these fun designs, you're not gonna get this crystal clear look with only hot process natural soap ingredients. Now you can make this stuff from scratch with a hot process soap, meaning you can buy the, chem the chemical ingredients and you can make this at home on your countertop. You don't need to buy commercial melt and pour, but to get it to look like this, you still do need to use specific detergent ingredients. Now also, on the other hand, you can make a natural version of meltable soap using only natural ingredients and isopropyl rubbing alcohol. But what'll end up happening is it's not gonna be crystal clear. It'll be a golden translucent color when you're done making it. And you can even make this design that you're watching me make today. It looks really fun. I've made some of these in the past the natural way. It looks completely different and unique, but it doesn't look like the design that you're gonna see today. It's not crystal clear. And so if you wanna try this and you know that you're gonna get a different look out of it, then you can recreate this with the full recipe for natural meltable soap over in the melt and pour section that's posted near this one in the recipe directory. 
Now, I mentioned that these questions have come from the Facebook group over time, and I'm aware that not everybody has Facebook or even prefers that method of social networking. The DMs through the Facebook really is the way to ask me, personally reach out to me to ask a question. But for those of you who don't use Facebook, I have created some uh, group threads over at thermomermaid.com where you can add to the topic if you're not a Facebook user. Now there are some people who've told me that they'd love to join in, but they just they just don't want to use Facebook, they don't do the social net networking. If that's the case, then you're welcome to come over to this group and add your art to your ideas. You can post your pictures if you want. If you want a specific group or a specific topic to be created, just let me know and I'll create that for you. Right now, there's a place where you can post your soap work, you can post pictures and ask questions, you can show the community what you're working on, and there's also a group for those of you who have a seller store over on the Thermal Mermaid Marketplace. I created an entire group over there to answer questions for anyone who wanted to utilize the free store to sell your work with, uh, without having to have a Shopify or any value, final value fees or anything like that. Now you can join in, you could even lurk, you don't have to join, you could just see what's going on over there if you're interested and see how that's all working out. So I do invite you guys to check it out and hopefully this will just create a more flexible resource for anyone who would like to participate but doesn't want to hassle with all the extra social network stuff. Now the first part of this design has already been poured and it's been set aside so that it can become firm. It takes about 45 minutes for that entire tray that you saw me pour. Now making the moons is much easier. Now I'm going to repeat the process with a little bit of yellow and a little tiny bit of glitter dust and I'm going to pour them into these sphere shaped molds just like you saw me do with the first part. Now if you're looking for the perfect silicone molds for this project, go on Amazon or online and just um, do a search for candy trays that are meant to be pouring chocolate bonbons. They're not going to be 100% globes but when you unmold these you'll see that they look like it in the project and just find different size cavities so that you can create the moons and the planets. They range anywhere from one ounce to a half ounce to even smaller than that and you can find these in a variety of sizes maybe six or seven different sizes and for my selection I just chose the smallest cavity versus the largest and then that way we get that contrast of size when you're pouring these out. And after about 30 minutes, we can unmold these. And as you can see, they're ready to be embedded into the lobes. So we have our marbles for our planets and our moons, and we've got two parts of this project down and one part left to go. Now when we continue on for the third part of this project and we're chopping up the soap to make the space, I want this look to be a dusty, watery look. So I'm only going to color the canvas with just a little bit of blue and viro glitter. And I'm going to use this part, of course we're going to use this to suspend the planets, and we're also going to add in some white titanium dioxide to create a look of space clouds. So the actual scenery in the entire bar, it's pretty noisy. This is a pretty busy, very, very beautiful looking, cloudy, dusty um, space environment that our planets will be suspended in. Now when you're pouring your design, you can kind of do this in one of two ways. You can pour the first layer of your suspension and then very strategically place your planets in allow for that suspension to firm up just a little bit so that when you place the next layer or when you place your moons in they'll be able to hold in the soap and that's fine but you might end up seeing a little bit of a ridged crackle in your um, in your suspension product and it's perfectly fine because that'll sort of add to that space noise that we're creating with the glitter and the titanium dioxide that'll make clouds so it all looks good but in this project you saw me split the soap into one third one third and one third 
And so we're gonna have a lot more planets. They're really ready to be packed in there. So with this project, I like to put two or three planets into a bar of soap. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get these so that they're kind of fixed a little bit, settled in, pour my first layer just so that I don't have any air pockets or any holes. And then I'm gonna kind of just strategically pack in the rest of the planets and the moons around it so that it's gonna look really pretty and it's gonna be packed full of color and design. And then notice here, I've added just a little bit of titanium dioxide. I'm not coloring the whole thing. It's this translucent cloudy look. And I'm just gonna splash it in. And of course, this is gonna create more of an amorphous look when I add the next layer on top. And you'll see what that looks like when we cut it open. But it gives us this beautiful space cloud look. So here we are, we're just gonna finish filling this all in. And then once this is done, we'll leave it be and we'll allow for this to set up for about two hours. And then we'll come back and we'll cut it open and you'll see how gorgeous this particular scenery looks like. Oh, and before I forget to tell you, in the video that we're about to post after this one, we're gonna be making a beautiful zeolite volcanic clay sugar scrub. It's great for your face, and zeolite's special because it has a self-warming agent to it. So this is a very unique sugar scrub. It's not like anything that we've posted before um, in the sugar scrubs you've seen on this channel. And we're gonna be posting that one tomorrow, so be sure to subscribe to this channel if you wanna see how we're making this particular product and you can also see the effects of sugar scrub. We're also gonna talk a little bit about your citric essential oils and when they may or may not, you may or may not want to put them into your face products. So we're gonna cover that a little bit in the next video and uh, that will be posted after this one. Be sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss out on that one when we post it. After about three hours, I'm ready to unmold this and slice it open. Now, you're gonna see me try a quick cheat, and I'm gonna cut corners here for just a second, and I'm gonna take this uh, entire loaf, and I'm gonna put it on my loaf cutter so that I can film it and show it to you more easily. Now, generally speaking, loaf cutters are not for melt and pour. So if you have one of these, you really don't wanna put an entire loaf of melt and pour soap. What happens is, is they get stuck, and then maybe when you're a quarter of the way through, you just need extra force to get that down. And when you change your mind, and then you try to pull back, what happens is, is it the, those uh, wires will chew up the face of your bars. So if I were by myself, I wouldn't even have even tried to cut this way, but I had my son with me, so I had an extra set of arms to help me push through and cut through the loaf. It almost wasn't enough. I wasn't expecting it to be that hard, and I could have easily ruined this loaf, and I would have had to remake it all over again to make this video, but today I got lucky. And I guess what I'm saying is that's just an example of why it's better to take your time, do things right the first time, and cutting corners is not always beneficial. But after we did get through this, you can now see how beautiful this design turned out, and you can see exactly what the inside of all of these pieces look like. And it's so cute and clever how you can get that wispy white cloud look on the planets, and you can have that embedded green Earth in a watery blue planet Earth based on just a quick, simple little technique of embedding your melt and pours the right way. Thank you for joining me today while we made our melt and pour planet Earths. Now, if you're interested in picking up one of these bars, you can find it listed over at thermalmermaid.com where you can buy any of the soaps or the cosmetics that you see being made on this channel. You can also find other products from other crafters in our community. And if you wanna get the recipe or if you wanna join in with other soap makers who are working on their products, you can always come over to thermalmermaid.com slash blog and you can explore more and find some great info, details, and just more about handmade soap making and the cosmetics that you might wanna make on your own. Till we see you tomorrow.